Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can, in Lightroom, prepare a photograph for printing at a lab and how you're going to get it onto a USB drive to do just that. If you're familiar with working in Lightroom, you'll know that once you've finished processing the image in the Develop module, the changes to the image are actually recorded in the Lightroom catalog and they're not actually made to the image itself. So if we wanted to do something with this image, we could right click it and choose export and then we could export it to disk. But if we want to prep it for printing and then take it to a lab, we'll take it from here in the develop module and we'll head to the print module because what we want to do is set up this image ready for printing. But since we're sending this out for printing, chances are that we're going to be printing on a machine that we just don't have. So we're not going to be using the print setup. Instead, we're going to start with print job over here in the right hand panel. And you're going to make sure that you print to JPEG file because this is going to open up to you all the ability that you have to create custom images in Lightroom ready for printing. Now I want to print this image on an 8x10 sheet of paper. I want to send it away for 8x10 printing. So I've selected custom file dimensions and I'm going to type 8 inches and then 10 inches. Here I can set my file resolution. Now I can only do that if I have draft mode printing turned off. So I don't want to have draft mode printing turned on, but I do want to have a high file resolution. If this is not the appropriate resolution, I've got 300 ppi here. If we wanted to print at 400 ppi or 450, we just type it in there and the image will be exported at this resolution. For print sharpening, we can select low, standard or high. I'm going to select standard and then the media type because that's important too. I want to print this on matte paper and I want the JPEG quality to be really, really high. So I'm winding that up to 100%. So I've got everything preset up here. If my print shop said that they wanted a different profile, then I would be selecting a different profile. And if they had profiles that they gave me, then I would be selecting a profile that they gave me. But for most things, sRGB is appropriate. If you know you need a profile, you'll know that you need a profile and you can select it here. So I have my print job here ready to go and you'll see that for my layout style I had selected custom package because I want to be able to drag and drop this image into position and now I can size it. Now because this is a JPEG print job I'll be able to take the cell wider and taller than the sheet of paper. Well, I should be able to, but if this happens to you, you'll just want to go in to your cells and make sure that you set this to 10 and 8. And now my cell is filling the sheet of paper. If there's any wiggle room for the image, in other words, if the image were not cropped to 8 by 10, I could hold the control key on the Mac. That's the Alt and Command key on the Mac and move the image within its cell. But this was an 8 by 10 prepped image. Now if I want to, I can add copyright information or an overlay over my image. I'm going to page here and I have an identity plate overlay. I'm going to use the one that says Helen Bradley Photography and you can just see it down here. Now I'm just going to put that in the bottom of the image. Now because this is not a text identity plate, the color is set to black because I've got override color set on, but you can see that it actually originally was a white piece of text and I can change it to any color I like by selecting override color and then select the color from this color picker here. I'm just going to leave it as white. If you don't have an identity plate created, click this little down pointing arrow here and you can choose edit and that will let you create an identity plate. You can see here that I've used a styled text identity plate and I've just typed in Helen Bradley Photography using Myriad Web Pro and a 14 point type. You can see it's also a pale grey type so it's not pure white. So over here I actually overrode the colour and used pure white. You can override colour on a text identity plate but you can't on a graphic one. If you want to use a graphic one in different colours you've got to create each one of them individually. And then from custom, I would just have selected save as and save it with a name so that I can get it back at any time. 
And as I said, Override Color lets you select any color at all for this identity plate. Now, if this is all ready for printing, then all I need to do now is to click Print to File. And Lightroom opens a Save As dialog, and what I need to do is determine where I'm going to put the image. Well, I'm just going to dump it into this subfolder that's got quite a few of my images in it. I'm just going to call it Sydney JPG. Now, this is a high quality JPEG image. I'll just click Save. And it's now being prepared to be sent out as a print job to my specifications. It's an 8 by 10 image at 450 ppi. All I need to do now is go and find the image inside my folder. To do that, I'm going to open up Windows Explorer in that particular folder. Here is the Sydney image. And here you can see the image dimensions. It's 3600 by 4500 pixels in size. So that's the correct PPI for this image, and we can preview it here. If I had a USB drive attached to my computer, I could just drag and drop this into the USB drive, and it would be ready to be taken to the lab for printing. If you're sending it online, then you would just go to your online site and get ready for printing. And when you're asked to upload it, you would just upload this image. This is a high quality JPEG all ready for printing. And it's come from inside Lightroom using this print job option to set it up as a JPEG instead of a file that's going direct to a printer attached to my computer. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on this YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com, where you'll find more tips, tricks, and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, and a whole lot more.